on the Experts Connect podcast, we have thought-provoking conversations with top-performing experts on topics that matter to you. With Experts Connect, you'll uncover fascinating facts and gain the necessary skills you'll need to improve all aspects of your life. Today, Dr. Rodriguez will be talking to us about wearable technologies to manage Parkinson's disease. Dr. Daniel Rodriguez Martin received his BSc degree in Industrial Technical Engineering in Electronics in 2007 and Industrial Automatic Control and Electronics in 2009. Both BSCs were obtained, achieving honors in their final projects. He also obtained his MSc degree in Automatic Control and Robotics in 2011. In 2014, he obtained the PhD in Automatic Control, Vision and Robotics at the Automatic Control Department of the Universitat Politecnica de Catalunya, UPC, with honors. He achieved two competitive grants in order to perform the PhD and a postdoc. From 2009 to 2017, he has worked at the Technical Research Center for the Dependency Care and Autonomous Living, from the UPC, where he participated in several national projects and international projects. He is the author of more than 40 research publications in the field of inertial system design, machine learning algorithms, human activity recognition, and Parkinson's disease symptoms detection and monitoring. Since 2017, he is the Chief Technical Officer and Chief Quality Officer of Sense for Care, the spin-off created from the CETPD, managing European projects, quality affairs, and he's also involved in business, reaching important agreements for the company. Hi, Danny. How are you doing? Hi, nice to meet you again. Very well, thanks. You're welcome. And now we're going to talk about Parkinson's disease. So can you tell us what is Parkinson's disease? Well, uh, Parkinson's disease is a neurological disorder that affects 10 million people around the world. This is the second neurodegenerative disease after Alzheimer's. So it's uh, very important to follow this disease. And the last research article says that in 2040, the number of Parkinson's disease patients is going to double. So it's a serious, it's very serious disease. Okay. And what are the signs and symptoms of this disease? Well, uh, maybe you know the tremor. This is the most common one. But um, this is not the most assessed. Um, there is another one which is called bradykinesia which is uh, a slowness of movement. The patient cannot move well. Um, they move very slowly. Then uh, they have the, the back like forward. So it impedes them to move well, to walk well. And sometimes they lose the balance because of that. And they have uh, a lot of falls, uh, gait impairment, and so on. Also, there is a... Another one, which is the dyskinesia, which is a collateral effect of the most um, common medication, which is levodopa. When you take levodopa, um, after five, eight years of taking levodopa, you have dyskinesia, which is a kind of choreic movement. So uh, there are a lot of uh, symptoms. Also, you have the freezing of gait, which is the sudden uh, stop when you are walking, so it's a very complex, it's a very complex disease. Very complex disease indeed. Yeah. And you know, in e-health, we're always using various technologies to monitor different diseases and physiological signals. But can you tell us more into what are the challenges 
and opportunities to use technology to monitor Parkinson's disease. Yeah. You have to understand that nowadays, um, the, the patient goes to the doctor's office and uh, the neurologist has only 10 or 15 minutes to evaluate the patient. So uh, the neurologist needs much more information because I, as I have told you, uh, the disease is very, is very complex. Um, the patient fluctuates around the day the symptom changes along the day. You have different distributions, different severity, and only with 10 or 15 minutes, it's impossible to evaluate. So using a tool that provides you uh, objective information and what is happening in real life, it's uh, a very good opportunity for the neurologist to, uh, to adjust much better the, the therapy the patient. And due to that, uh, the patient will have a better quality of life. This is the, the, the challenge to, to change the life of the patient, but also to change the paradigm of the evaluation of the patient. Yeah, can you dive a bit more into changing the paradigm of the evaluation of the patient? Of course. Well, uh, you know, now that the neurologist has only 10, 15 minutes and, and the patient uh, goes medicated to the office because of the nature of the disease, uh, the patient cannot move well. So they have to medicate. They arrive to the office, they don't show the symptoms, and the neurologist has to perform an evaluation of it. So um, the main idea is, okay, we can provide a tool that monitors you in home in real life, in uh, normal ambient, normal uh, domestic uh, activities. And then I can have uh, later a lot of information how your symptoms have uh, behaved along the day, how, how they change, uh, what is the severity. And based on this information, I can adjust much better the therapy. And this is the idea of our hotel. Okay, great. And just to clarify for the purposes of the audience, when you mean, when you refer to domestic activities, you're talking about activities of daily living, like walking or sleeping, etc. Are those what you're yeah. referring to? Yeah, normal life of a patient. When they wake up, they make a walk, and they take their breakfast, then sometimes go uh, well, to, to do some uh, tracking, whatever, normal life, doing a domestic task in home, even staying at the sofa, whatever. Yeah. Okay, okay, thanks for clarifying. And your company, Danny, Sense for Care, designed the Holter. Can you tell us what does the Holter do? Yeah, well, here it is. This is the Holter, this is called a Staten, okay? And the main idea is to, uh, the final idea is to provide objective information to the neurology. Now the evaluations are the, the patient goes to the doctor's office and explain what has happened in the last day. This is very subjective because it's based on questionnaires and diary. This device um, provides objective information. It has uh, several uh, algorithms inside and then um, it provides the, the severity and the distribution of the patient. It, it's an inertial system, so the patient was deep uh, on the waist, on the left part of the waist, and, and the patient works by itself. So the patient doesn't have to do anything. It, it is autonomous. And then when the patient comes back, the neurologist only downloads the information, and then you have a map, uh, with graphics, with everything, a map of, this, of the disease, of the severity and the distribution of the disease around the day. Interesting. So I'm curious because I heard you mention algorithms and getting information to the neurologist. So tell us what technologies power the Holter? Yeah. Well, the, it's an inertial system. So it is based on a pre axial accelerometer. Uh, which is uh, inside the system, and uh, well, it provides inertial signal that we analyze internally with a microcontroller. We have several machine learning algorithms embedded 
within the device that are computing continuously in real time all the algorithms. Each algorithm detects uh, each one of the symptoms, okay? And then all the algorithms that are computed in real time are stored in an internal memory. And it's very easy then um, once the, the monitoring period has finished, the neurology who owns the, an application uh, downloads all this information, creating a, a very nice report for them with colors and so on. Great. So just to clarify again for our audience, because you know, like this is very heavy tech information. So you mentioned that the holter has an accelerometer, right? And from mm -hmm. my understanding, the accelerometer basically monitors these physical activities of daily living. Is that correct? It does correct. Yeah. When you move, uh, you are providing some information of your movement that the accelerometer detects. Then the signal uh, is processed inside the microcontroller. With, uh, in, inside the microcontroller, we have the machine learning algorithm. This algorithm says, okay, we have a peak here, and uh, now it's moving in other way. And then as we have several algorithms, each one provides an outcome, a different outcome. And this outcome is the, the, it's the result of the severity of the symptom. Great. And can you tell us why do people with Parkinson's disease need devices like the Holter? Yeah, I think that there are two main reasons. Uh, maybe there are more, but two main ones. The first one is because uh, thanks to our technology, and now you know the, the scenario that we are living with the COVID, uh, we have the possibility to monitor the motor symptoms remotely. That means that the patient does not need to go to the doctor's office. You can send a sensor, program it, and then uh, you can make normal life. And then uh, once the monitoring period has finished, you can send back the sensor to the doctor's office. And that's all. I mean, it's not necessary that the patient goes to the doctor's office. Then the neurologist can call can phone the patient and ask them how they are, how they feel, and make the same evaluation as in the doctor's office. We have this possibility. And so we are providing much more information of what is happening in real life. And second is what I have explained before. Um, with only 10 to 10 minutes, it is not possible to provide the correct evaluation because this disease is so complex and changes uh, so much along the day. Uh, imagine at the, at the morning, the person is in up state. That means that he uh, um, has the, the bradykinesia that I have explained before uh, is very severe. The person cannot move practically. Then they have to take medication. After two hours, they feel well. Uh, maybe some of them have this kinesia. Then after three, four hours, they feel bad again. So it's a disease that changes a lot. And then there are patients that have more pleasing of gait than the other, more uh, pulse more than the other. So it depends a lot. And based on this information, uh, the neurologist will have a lot of, um, it, it's a very good tool to have um, uh, for, the, for the neurologist to have this information to, to adjust better the therapy. So these are the main two reasons. <laughs> Yeah, that's good. And I'm, I'm also curious because I've also worked with wearable devices and where exactly does the patient wear this device? Is it hard for them to put on this device? Is it easy to use? Can you dive a bit into that for us? Yeah, well, this is uh, what it is called a wearable system. So it means that you can wear the sensor but it has a, a specific belt, it's a biocompatible belt, and it is worn on the left part of the waist. So um, basically what we do is uh, the neurology or the nurse or the physiotherapist puts the sensor inside the belt and then provides the sensor with the belt. And the only uh, requirement is when you wake up, you put the belt 
and then when you go to sleep at night, you remove the belt, and that's all. It has a battery life of seven days, so it is not necessary to charge the system. It is not necessary to do anything. It's very simple for the patient. Great. And you said that it has a battery life of seven days. So what happens after seven days? Who is responsible to charge the device or change the batteries? Normally, uh, the monitoring periods based on our experience uh, takes five, six days, no more than this. With this date, you can see more or less the severity and how the disease behaves along the way. Uh, with this information, uh, it is enough to adjust the therapy. But it is true that there are some medication that uh, the effect of this medication takes like 14 or 20 days to make effect. In this case, we provide a charger that the patient only has to put the sensor here, okay? And uh, that's all, the, the, the sensor charges in three, four hours, okay? This is very simple. Uh, and of course, if the battery life, uh, if the battery finishes, it's low, uh, the, mon the monitoring period finishes, and that's all. Once the sensor is um, returned to the, to the neurologist, the neurologist um, charges the, the sensor at the doctor's office, and uh, that's all. This is quite simple. Simple indeed. And you've had some clinical pilots, Danny. What were the results? Yeah, we are uh, involved in nine pilots, approximately uh, nine pilots. Uh, two of them have finished. Two of them finished and we are, well, we, this, is, this pilot are external. I mean, we don't, we haven't done uh, the protocol. We have not participated. We are technology providers, and, and that's all. Uh, it is very interesting because these ones uh, have published uh, different research articles, which uh, have told us very interesting results, because um, a lot of neurologists would use the sensor in uh, clinical practice. 89% uh, of neurologists think that. Also, we have found that uh, more than 80% of neurologists thinks that this is a very good tool to detect advanced Parkinson's disease patients because it is very important to clarify that an, uh, an advanced Parkinson's disease patient needs another therapy, which is called advanced therapy for Parkinson's disease patients. Uh, but the neurologist needs to be sure when it is the moment to put this therapy. With the quarter, now they can um, they can decide this because they have much more information. Also, another thing uh, which is very important is that um, in a research article they say that they can detect, of course, motor fluctuation. This is what I have told you that they they are in a wrong state, then they are well, then they are uh, again bad. They can detect the motor fluctuation, and they can detect this kinesia and what is more we can detect early this kinesia and early motor fluctuation so you can see the evolution of them this is pollution and um, this is very important information for us okay and where are you on the roadmap to commercializing this product we are well this is a c mark uh, device medical device, which means that we can only uh, commercialize the system in Europe. But we have done uh, different administration also to commercialize in South America. We have now a couple of uh, women in Europe, which is our main focus. We want to uh, cover the Europe zone. Uh, but also we have another women with a company in South America. So these are the, uh, our regions of uh, work. Uh, this is true that we want to go in the future to USA, uh, Asia, and Australia. These three zones are very important for us. 
But um, the, the truth is that we are very small. We are a startup. We are growing up. Uh, 2020 uh, began uh, bad because of COVID, but we have ended very well. And now we are growing. And uh, But first of all, we want to cover Europe. This is our the most important thing, thing for us. Great. And just to clarify again, what were the patients and the neurologists saying about the halter after participating in the clinical studies? Well, we have uh, a, a score that is, it is evaluated by the neurologist, which is the usability. Yeah. They, after this test that the, they have done, um, they, they also make the usability test. Uh, if, if they have like a sensor, how do they find the sensor, if it is nice or not, if it is use, um, easy to use, uh, if it is useful, and the marks are very, very, very high. So we are very happy about this because it is very well accepted by the patient. Actually, I have to say that the patient uh, are very happy and uh, likes to uh, use this technology, these new technologies. When, when you explain that to a patient, the patient uh, seems like, uh, okay, let's go, let's go, let's, let's go to test this device. So it's new, um, uh, it provides a lot of information and also uh, they know that they are going to increase the quality of life. So uh, they are very happy. We, we are uh, glad to, to see the results of usability, which are very good. Great. And what's your message to our audience? Now we are in a very uh, beginning phase. Uh, we are uh, working with different companies, but also with Parkinson's disease associations. Uh, we are uh, saying like, hello, because this is the beginning. Uh, of our of our life, uh, the device uh, only has one life in the market, one year life in the market. So uh, it's uh, it's the beginning. Um, I, I I would tell them to follow us in in the social networks um, because we are we are achieving a lot of results. We are achieving a lot of research. And this is uh, very important for the patients because they, it can change their lives in the future. Great. So how can people follow you? Well, you can uh, send a mail to info at senseforcare.com. But the, I recommend to the audience to go to the, our webpage, which is statonholder.com. Okay. That you will find a lot of all the information they need about the holder, the emails they need to send uh, for uh, asking some some information. So they will find everything there. Great. Thank you so much, Danny, for sharing your knowledge on the holter to monitor Parkinson's disease with us. It was really enlightening. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you for your time and thank you for your interview. You're welcome, Danny. Ciao. Thanks for tuning in on Experts Connect. Please head on over to teachsomebody.com and give us an applause. You may share your comments and ask your questions in the comment section. Please subscribe to us on YouTube as well as follow us on Spotify, Apple, and Google Podcasts. You can also follow me on Instagram at Davis Owusu. Have a lovely rest of the week. Bye.